and 4x plus 2y equals negative 8, we're going to do the thumb cover-up method. So what we're going to do is find two points and connect the dots, which is going to be cool. Okay, so if we set x equal to 0, we're going to cover the x up. So then we're going to have 2y equals negative 8. And then, you know, like that old curmudgeon guy, I don't want 2y, I just want y. So we're going to cancel it. Cancel culture is alive and well in math. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. So now we have the point 0, comma, negative 4. And just the uninitiated, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. x is horizontal, y is vertical. So uh, 0, comma, negative 4, that would be 0 for the x. So now we're y, negative 4, right there. So we have one of our points. That's awesome. Then we're going to recopy this, the 4x plus 2y equals negative 8, and the thumb cover up. Now we're going to cover up the y and act like y equals 0. So then we have 4x equals negative 8. And then we're going to divide both sides by 4 because we just want x by itself. So the 4 is canceled there. We have x equals, and the negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. So that would be the point, and the x value is negative 2, and the y is 0. So it's negative 2, 0, which is the x-intercept. And we'll connect the dots with, with the black line here. Um, I think if you put a few more points on there, that, that's cool too. But I think two points should suffice for a straight line for most teachers. Um, I might not be the most accurate. That's because I have aged eyes. But I think that graph would, would be fine for most classes. If not, um, comment and I'll make them more accurate for you in the future. Okay, cool. I like these cases where we have something like y equals 2. Because what what's, that's going to be is a straight line. It's a little counterintuitive because it's going to be a straight horizontal line at y equals 2. So y equals 2 is right here. So it's basically line... Okay, I'm a little off, but you understand, you get the gist. So it's the y equals 2 because that's going to be the y-axis right here. Now, the x equals negative 3 that's going to be an up and down line, a vertical line, we call it. And that's going to be at x equals negative 3 is right about there. And then just make sure you put arrows on the ends just to uh, placate your teacher. OK, find the equation of each line. Write the equation in slope-intercept form. So the slope-intercept form is, is probably the most common form you'll see equations in, uh, linear equations. It's y equals mx plus b. And let me let me take a moment here. If you already know this, go ahead and skip ahead. The m is the slope, and that's the rise over run, or the up over over, or the up divided by to the right. We'll explain that in a second. And then this b is going to be what they call the y-intercept. So it's usually point zero comma B. So if we have M and B, we're cool because we've got a slope and an intercept. So in this case, slope is negative 3 fourths. So M is negative 3 fourths. And the Y intercept is 0, negative 2. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. They gave us the B. Thank you. Thank you. So all we have to do is write, instead of Y equals MX plus B, we're going to substitute the negative 3 fourths for that M value, right? Because that's negative 3 fourths is the M. And that's right here. I know I'm highlighting orange on orange. I guess that's a big no-no. But, and then so that's going to be x. And then plus b, what is b? Negative 2. Now to clean it up, we could write it as y equals negative 3 fourths x minus 2. Just to kind of, most people don't like to see a positive and a negative or a plus and a minus or a plus and a negative. So what's going to happen here? Also, one other little point, um, and some other teachers might prefer it as y was negative 3x over 4 minus 2. Putting the x, the variable, on the, uh, on the numerator is usually a safe option, unless it's distinctly in the denominator. You can put it to the side, like in the one above the orange line, but the one below the orange line is the one I prefer. Um, it'll make more sense in higher levels of math. Um, I hate to be that guy saying stuff like that, but there you go. Okay, so now we have m equals 2, and we have the point negative 3, negative 1. This is still going to harken back to the y equals mx plus b. But here we have, we have our m, right? I'm going to highlight that in orange. And we have an x. That's going to be our x is the negative 3. 
and then the negative one. So let me let me explain what that means. This is going to be our x value, and then this is going to be our y value. We're going to plug it in here. So this is going to be um, our y. I'll underline that. This is going to be our x, and then this is going to be our m. So what we're going to do is take these numbers here and substitute in this equation. So we have instead of y, we're going to write negative 1. Sorry, I almost wrote y again. Equals, oh, what is m? m is 2. So 2 times, and what is x? Negative 3 plus b. This is such a simple form. Honestly, I learned this in the last 10 years from a brother-sister team locally. I can't believe I didn't know this way easy method to solve this way. It's always using two-point form. Okay, in any case, I'll stop waxing nostalgic here. Now what we want to do is isolate the b. So we have negative 6 plus b. What's the opposite of subtracting 6? You're right, adding 6. So we're just going to add 6 to both sides. That'll cancel. And on the right-hand side, we have b. And then instead of saying negative 1 plus 6, when we have two different signs, like a negative and a positive, we, what we want to do is find out which one has a larger absolute value. So absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Absolute value of 6 is 6. In this case, positive number wins. So I know the answer would be positive. And then we do simple subtraction. We do larger number up top, smaller number bottom, 6 minus 1, 5. So positive 5 equals B. That's not quite the slope-intercept form. But now we have the M and the B, so we can write it. So we can say, oh, Y equals, what was the M? 2. So 2X plus what was b? 5. Cool. And we box that so our teacher sees that we've finished our work. Okay. We, oh, containing 10, 1 and 6, negative 1. Sounds like we need an equation here. So first thing, we're going to do y, or <laughs> gosh, English is my first language. I pronounce that y. It's actually pronounced m. Okay. So m is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, that's going to be the equation. You're going to see it probably a hundred more times before you finish algebra one and algebra two or college algebra. So it's good to memorize it. And then and then let me label everything here for you. That will be our x1 is 10, our y1 is 1, our x2 is 6, and our y2 is negative 1. So in this case, m is going to be our y2, which is negative 1, minus, I'm going to close everything in parentheses to be totally safe. y1 is uh, 1, oops, I almost wrote negative 1. Here I am getting ahead of myself. Over our x2 is 6, and our x1 is 10. Okay, so then we're going to do the math on this one. So that's going to be negative 1 minus 1 over, remember here we have something with two different signs. If we don't have a sign in front of a number, we assume a positive. So if we had this game going on again, absolute value of 6 is 6, absolute value of negative 10 is 10. The larger absolute values with the negative number in this case, so we know the answer is going to be negative. And then we do simple subtraction. Hey, let's do 10 minus 6, big number minus small number, 4. It's just going to have that negative sign up front because we know the answer is going to be negative. Now, up in the numerator, we got a little different action going on. Negative 1 minus 1, right? Negative 1. We're going to go one more to the left on the number line. So if I had a number line here and here's 0, negative 1, negative 2. Negative or smaller is to the left, positive or larger to the right. So we start at negative 1. We go one more negative. We end or land at negative 2. So it's negative 2 over negative 4. Ooh, double dagger method in effect. Whoosh, whoosh. So that's going to be, um, if you ever have a negative divided by negative, they basically cancel out to be positive. And also, 2 over 4 can be simplified because 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 goes into 4 two times. So m is 1 half. I'm not going to quite box that. But then we're going to do that trick we just learned, that y equals mx plus b. And let's use an easy x and y. I'm going to make this my x and this my y. I, I we want to avoid negative numbers just because there's a lot of problems with signs that I could be running into. So the y is 1. 1 equals, what's the m? Oh, we just figured it out. That's 1 half. The m is 1 half. So 1 half, open parentheses, what's the x value? 10 plus b. You could use the 6, negative 1, by the way. It'll, it'll still work out. Everything will be um, fine in the end. So 1 equals, what's 1 half of 10? I think that's 5, because 10 over 2 is 5, plus b. And we're trying to solve for b now. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. 
and then that cancels here. We have b equals, and then if you use a calculator, that's negative four. If you do want me to work this out, put it in the comments and I will work it out. So now we have the b and the m, but our final piece de resistance answer will be here. y equals mx plus b, y equals one half. Remember the m is one half, x, and then the b is minus four. So I'm just gonna put, instead of saying plus negative four, I'll just put minus four. And that's our answer there. Okay, ooh, parallel to the line. Now, parallel, what that means is parallel lines, parallel. And let me also give you the uh, the sign for this. It's it's this. It looks almost like absolute value bars that you know are trying to kiss each other. So parallel means slope is the same. So it's parallel to this line. Oh, by the way, this line, y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 1. Guess what the slope is? You're right. It's the coefficient. So this m is negative 2 thirds, which means, and that's what this little arrow thing means, the m parallel, ooh, ooh kind of cool symbol there, is also negative 2 thirds. So any parallel slope will be negative 2 thirds. And then we're containing the point negative 3, 8. So let me do Napoleon's uh, invasion map of Russia here. It's going to go all crazy or like a mural in East LA. Man, please do not get defended from East LA. It's a nice place, but the murals are tagged. At least they were 20 years ago when I lived in that area. Okay, um, actually it's more like 25, but um, so y minus, let's see, y equals mx plus b. So y, oh, sorry, this is our x and this is our y. I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm just like thinking about the uh, flaming comments I'm going to get about um, murals in East LA being tagged. We'll just say murals in LA being tagged. So we're not offending a particular group, just everybody in Los Angeles. Okay, so uh, y equals mx plus b, we're gonna have eight equals negative two thirds. What is the x? Negative three plus b. And so I, I do wanna color code what's going on here. So the m, negative two thirds is there, right? That's, remember I have the y equals mx plus b. And then the, uh, the y, is eight, that's there. And then the B, or sorry, the X is negative three. So that's from getting the numbers from. And again, the equation Y equals MX plus B, because that's the slope intercept form. There's actually two other forms, actually maybe three, but this is the most common slope intercept. It's called slope, slope intercept. I, I misspelled slope, forgive me, slope intercept. So uh, let's actually do the work here. We have uh, eight equals, and then the cool thing is the negatives cancel, and actually the threes cancel, because it's like negative two thirds times negative three over one. So we got the double dagger method going on, cancel, cancel, they're both the same number. That's two over one, which is two. So eight equals two plus B, and then we're just trying to solve for B, so we're gonna subtract two from both sides. We do that, we have eight minus two is six. This cancels equals B. So we have the M, which is highlighted here. We have the B. So we're gonna write Y equals negative two thirds X plus six. Wonderful. And look, if, if there are things that are unclear about this uh, or I'm going too fast, let me know in the comments. It's totally fine. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down, however you feel. Totally fine with me. I'm cool with it. Um, perpendicular, oh, perpendicular. So perpendicular, oh my gosh, when you write the symbol, it looks like a T after it's seen Mike Tyson in an angry mood. It looks like a T's been knocked out, like upside down. That's the symbol for perpendicular. So the M for this line, right? The Y equals 5 fourths X plus 2. The slope is this, this 5 fourths. So the M is 5 fourths. Perpendicular slope, so the M perpendicular, like that upside down T, is going to be the negative reciprocal. What does that mean? I change the sign. If it's if it's positive, it's going to become negative. If it's already negative, then it's going to become positive, right? And then we flip it. We're going to flip this puppy. So instead of saying 5 over 4, 4 over 5. So the M perpendicular is 4 over 5. And then containing the point, negative 10, 3. So that's going to be our X, and that's going to be R, Y, oh my gosh, it is getting a little busy here. So remember, we have that form, Y equals MX plus B. 
And since the perpendicular slope, that's going to be our, our m value. I'll just write it there. So that's going to be negative 4 fifths. Um, I'm going to enclose x in parentheses. The x is negative 10. Oh gosh, it is, it is looking like I'm tagging up my own problem. Um, plus, and then the b we don't know, but the y is 3. Okay. So let's to the side work out negative 4 fifths times negative 10. That's like saying negative 10 over 1. So again, we have a situation where we can do the double dagger. Negative times a negative is a positive. And then 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 10 twice. So that's going to be 4 times 2 over 1 times 1, which is going to be 8 over 1, which is 8. So we're going to have 3 equals 8 plus b. And then we want to just solve for b. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. You guys already know 3 minus 8. Well, you may already know 3 minus 8 is negative 5. So that's going to be my b value. Oh, cool. My m and my b are both uh, in... <sighs> I was going to say mayonnaise. It's mustard. Okay. Um, y equals negative 4 fifths x minus 5. Because if I do plus negative 5, teacher won't like it. So we're just going to write negative 4 fifths x minus 5. Okay, and then we continue. Ooh, ooh, next level of difficulty. Write the inequality shown by the graph with the boundary line y equals negative x minus 3. So we have this y equals negative x minus 3. The question is, the, the real thing is going to come out in orange. I don't know what the sign is yet. Um, but is, is it shaded above or below the red line? <gasps> Somebody said below. Okay, good, 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 good. So if it's below... It's going to be a y less than. Now, crazy thing, if it's a solid line, it means it includes it. So it's going to be that. So let me let me show you a couple examples. If you already want to go to the next problem, go to the next problem. But if I'd had it like this, dotted line, and it was shaded below, it would be a y is less than. The dotted line or dashed line means we don't actually include the line itself. So y is less than. Okay, now we're going to go to the opposite situation oh by the way this is a uh, this is the answer y is less than or equal to negative x minus three but if i if i'd shaded above like that would be y greater than or equal to um the other thing is if i'd shaded above and it was a dashed line it would be y is greater than so those are your four situations for inequalities if it's below and it's a solid line y is less than or equal to if it's below and dashed line, y is less than. If it's above solid line, y is greater than or equal to. If it's above and dashed line, y is greater than. Just so you know, I was totally confused about that when I was your age. That's why I went over that a lot. Okay, graph each linear inequality. So we're going to kind of do the reverse here. I'm going to do my line. Now, since it's a greater than, it means... First, it means shaded above. So I'm going to shade above, or it's going to be shaded above. I can't spell above. It's so many letters, I lose track. Okay, and then also, uh, since it's a greater than, not greater than or equal to, it's going to be a dashed line or dotted line. People get all kinds of arguments about this. Um, dashed and dotted basically mean the same thing. Okay, so if we do this, I want to treat it as an equality for a moment y equals 3 halves x plus 5. So if we treat it like an equality, we would just graph the point 0 comma 5, and the slope is 3 halves. That's that coefficient of the x. That means up 3 over 2, or right 2. It might be easier to think of it as going to the right 2. So let's first plot this point 0 comma 5. So 0, 5, right here. We're going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, up to 8, over 2, right there. Um, if we go up 3 over 2, we're already off the graph. So I'm going to go down 3, 1, from the original point here, 1, 2, 3, over 2, 1, 2. I'll do it again. Down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 2, 1, 2. Now, um, I'll, I'm going to do it again one more time, just a little rather quickly here. Um, now, since it's a dashed line, I don't want to use a straight line. So look, my 
my line's going to look like I've been day drinking, so uh, forgive me. And if you're a day drinker, I, I don't mean any offense by that. Okay, and we're going to be shaded above. Yay. So, oh, oh, I've got a shading tool, and I am going to use it. Okay, so it's like... <laughs> okay, actually, I should be shading like really darn close to that original line. So it's it's kind of like that. Um, if your teacher's cool with that, that is graphing out the inequality. Yes. Okay, cool, cool. I like it. I like it. Okay. Ooh, X minus Y is greater than or equal to negative four. Now, it's not in that really cool format that, that we like where it's Y equals MX plus B or Y is greater than Y is less than. It's this X, Y thing. So we're going to do the same thing. Treat it. Well, first, actually, let's make it a Y equals. It's just, that's probably the easiest thing to do here. Um, if we do that, we cancel. We have negative Y is greater than or equal to negative X minus four. If it's an equality, I would have left it there, but it's an inequality, so knowing where to shade is, is important. Now look, I'm going to do this the official way. We're going to multiply both sides by negative 1. Now one thing we tend to forget when we work with inequalities, when you multiply by negative, you've got to change the direction of the inequality. That's, that's the number one mistake I see students making. Okay, and then we're going to distribute this negative 1 on the right-hand side. So negative 1 times negative x is going to be a positive x. Negative 1 times negative 4 is going to be plus 4. So now we have, oh, okay, something clear here. We know it's going to be shaded below. So I'm just going to say shade below. And then um, it's going to be a solid line. So two, two things that are good here. And then we know we have the point, like this is the y-intercept 4. So we have the point... And I'll just write it as PT as 0, comma 4. And then there's no number in front of X. So we just assume M is 1, which is like 1 over 1, which means 1 up, 1 right. And you're like, what does that mean? So let's actually graph that point 0, 4. So 0, 4 graphs right there, this point 0, 4. And then we're going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1 up one over one, up one to the right one technically because remember it's a positive slope so it looks like it's going to go up and to the right so it's a solid line so that's cool we can just do a solid line and i would recommend um i'm not the greatest drawing <laughs> straight lines freehand um but you do want to shade below and you know what? i've got a shading tool but i like this shading better actually i'm just going to go crazy with my little uh outline tool so we're shading below and gosh imagine if teacher took off points for like missing like little little points there okay so that's it that's the inequality shaded and this is the inequality we're actually shading y is less than or equal to x plus four okay we continue y is less than or equal to negative 5x okay good it's the format we like um now it's y is less than so we know Oh, 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 I'm still in highlight mode. Oh, and I erased the question. I, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so this means we're going to shade below because it's a less than, y is less than, and it's going to be a solid line. So two things you will always want to check out is were you shading above or below, and is it solid or dashed or solid or um, dotted? Okay, and then we're going to treat it like an equality. Y equals negative 5x. I'm going to be a little funky. I'm going to put 5x plus 0, or negative 5x plus 0. So the slope, m, is negative 5, which is like saying negative 5 over 1. Now, negative 5 over 1 is, it's like, we could say up negative 5 to the right one, but it's easier to say down 5 right one there, there's different ways to do it this is not the only way this is just the simplest way i think or the most intuitive and then um for the y-intercept for the point we have that y-intercept is going to be zero zero y-intercept always means x equals zero so that's where this zero comes from but also that zero is coming from here so let's graph it zero zero is a point zero zero we're going to go down 5 to the right one. So down 5 to the right one. Down 5 to the right one. We can go up 5 to the left one. From, from the original point, 0, 0. Up 5 to the left one. Okay. So it's, it's a rather vertical line we have going on here. And then, oh, th thank goodness it's a solid line because uh, 
already drew it as a solid line. I didn't even check. Okay, and then we're going to shade below. Now, th this is a little funky here. Um, shading below this line would actually be here, like below. It's a little to the left, because if, if I shaded to the right, it would actually be above the line. Because any any part in a shaded area, if you if you drop a line, it would fall below the graph. If I, if I shade it here and I dropped it, it would hit the graph. So just kind of keep that in mind when you shade above, shade below. Okay. Um, here we go. Y is less than 3. Oh, this is great. This is great. So we're going to treat it. Oh, oh, and it's going to be, where is it going to be? It's going to be below, and it's going to be dashed or dotted. And then we're going to treat it like y equals 3. Okay, this is kind of weird. It's not y equals mx plus b. It's like a y equals 3. Well, that's here. And it's a dashed. And I'm going to shade below. We're going to shade below. So it's going to be that right there. OK. Fantastic. And we finished Chapter 4 test. On to Chapter 5 next time. Good luck. May you be successful in all your math endeavors. Comment if you have any topics you want me to cover um, or change it to my methodology. I'm, I'm open. Okay, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.